In the bustling city of Port Harcourt, Nigeria, Chief Ome Kanaya was a man of unparalleled wealth and influence. He was a self-made bologna who had built an empire from scratch, encompassing oil well, real estate, and technology companies that spanned the globe. Yet, despite his success, Chief Ome Kanaya was haunted by a single fear. How would his family manage his fortune? when he was no longer around. Chief Omekanaya was a titled man who had two wives, Ifoma and Ogonna. They both had two children each, making it four children. The children raised in luxury had never known a life of struggle. Chief Omekanaya often worried that his children, accustomed to the lavish lifestyle, would squander his hard-earned wealth. Just yesterday, Adora King demanded some of five million naira just to throw a lavish birthday party in the club when cautioned by her father that it was an extravagant spending she goes to report to her mother who pestered her husband until he granted her daughter's request some days ago his first son choka got a sum of 10 million naira from the company's fund through the accountant just to travel to dubai to lavish it on his numerous girlfriend none of his children were interested in managing his numerous businesses the only person that cared for him and his well-being was his loyal servant, Ochuk, who was his personal driver. In one of his meetings with his bosom friend, Ogemeka, after Chivomeka Naya told him what bothered him, Ogemeka suggested to him to avoid his children to squander his hard end world. He should test their character and prepare them for the future. The plan would be to fake his death. He thought about the plan and agreed to go through with it. With the help of his trusted lawyer, Barrister Chima, and a high-tech security company, Shivome Kanaya orchestrated his own demise. A stage plane crash was reported, and the world will mourn the loss of the Bologna. His family was devastated, but little did they know that Shivome Kanaya was alive, watching their every move from a hidden location. His mansion ring with cameras and microphones. The family gathered in the grand living room of Chifome Kanaya's mansion, still reeling from the news of his death. The room was filled with tension as Barista Chima, a stern man with a reputation for discretion, prepared to read the will. Your father was a great man, Barista Chima began, his voice solemn. He left behind a legacy that will live on for generations. But he was also a man who believed in responsibility and the value of hard work. The will was read and the family listed and bathed bread. The estate was divided amongst the children with substantial sums allocated to each. Chuk and his eldest son received the largest share followed by the other children who were also handsomely provided for. However, it came as a shocking news when the will read that his personal driver, Ochuku, was left with a smaller share of an amount of money that seemed insignificant. But he was left with a challenge to prove his worth by growing the small seed into something greater. Ochuku nodded with excitement and determination to prove his worth. As days turned into weeks, the family members began to adjust to the new reality. Chuka the elders immediately booked a flight to Las Vegas where he purchased a fleet of luxury cars and a penthouse overlooking the city. Adora and the others embarked on a world tour, throwing extravagant parties and living like royalty. They went on extravagant shopping with friends indulged a high fashion and expensive jewelry lifestyle, filling their social media, feeding them with pictures of their lavish lifestyle. His other two wives, Ifoma and Ogonna, who had once been rivals, found common ground in their newfound wealth. They threw lavish parties, hosted charity galas, and became the talk of PHCT. The money flowed like water and soon, their family name became synonymous with excess. Meanwhile, Ochuko, with the help of Barisa Chima, took a different path. 
He invested his mother's inheritance wisely, focusing on businesses that had a long-term potential. He started small by opening a hotel. The road was not easy, but Ochoko was determined. He walked tirelessly, often late into the night, learning the ropes of the business world and making strategic moves that slowly but surely began to pay off. Months passed and the once vibrant Omeka Nayas mansion began to fall silent. Chuka returned from Las Vegas. His fortune squandered on failed business ventures and lavish lifestyle and reckless spending on women. The other siblings came back from their world tour, broke and delusionized. They were in financial ruin. Their once glamorous lifestyle, now a distant memory. The reality of the situation began to sink in. The money was gone. The business had failed and the family was on the brink of bankruptcy. It was then that Chief Omeka Naya decided to reveal himself, emerging from a secret hideout. As he walked into the room, fear gripped all in the room, as they thought it was a ghost they just saw. After some minutes, Chief Omeka Naya with his barrister sat down and explained the situation to his family. Who were in awe, he reprimanded all his family members who bowed their heads in shame. Then his driver Ochko walked in. Shivome Kanaya welcomed him with a smile and commended him for his effort in turning the little he was giving to something enormous. He used him to set example for his entire family members, and he was pleased with the driver who, out of the little he was giving, grew it into something that was big. We've come to the end of this story. I hope you did enjoy it. If this is your first time, you're highly welcome. Please don't forget to click on the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell to get the latest update. For my returning subscribers, a big thank you. Very big thank you to you.